Hey YouTube, this is Gio from Digital Spring Media and in this video we're going to unbox this Unify AC in-wall Wi-Fi access point and we're going to install it instead of an Ethernet jack. So the main reason I got this is to improve my Wi-Fi coverage in my home. At the moment I've already got a Unify installation. I've got various products, switches and PoE enabled devices. So this should fit in quite well with that setup. It's two type we've got it's compatible with two types of bands, the 5 GHz and a 2.4, and it's got a declared speed of 1167 megabits per second, dual radio. And it does say in wall, but just bear in mind it's not actually in wall, it's on top of the wall, but we'll have a look at that when we actually install it. Um, as you can see here, the package contents, and you can also see we've got two ports. And so in the older model, the ports were positioned in the front. I think they were like here, but now they're positioned down here. One port is PoE pass-through capable, but be aware it will, that will depend on how you power it yourself. So depending on the power it is receiving, it will be able to pass through on hot information. And the other one is data only. So let's, let's get going with the unboxing now, and then later on we'll install it. Okay, so put the sleeve at the side. I'm going to open up the box. So this is brand new. And we've got the unit itself. I'll put that aside a second. We've got some screws. And I think that's it. Yeah. Okay, cool. And we've got a little bit of marketing here. You can put this aside. Put the screws aside. Okay, so let's have a look at the unit. Pop it open. Okay, so it comes in one part here. So this is the cover. This is little the quick duck guide manual. And the unit itself. And here the back plate. So this is gonna be quite crucial. So this is gonna be the part that we need to fix at the wall. So we will need to put this at the wall. The cable will go through here. And once that's positioned, the Ethernet jack it connects into this port. So that's when this will then sit like this. And here you've got the two ports, uh, the output ports, they're like a mini switch. And then the cover will pop on top. Other thing to note, we have an LED light here. So they're different colors. Check the manual for the exact meaning of the colors. I don't remember them by heart. I think we've got a QR code. Potentially this might be used for adoption, but I'll, I'll double check that as I go through the installation process. And just to give you guys a look. Here we go, all around. PoE, PoE in, so PoE stands for power over ethernet, in and data. Okay, so we've got our three components here. We're going to need um, some basic networking equipment. So I would recommend having a tester to test the connection after we've installed a basic screwdriver and maybe some um, punch down tools. So you can get like a Ethernet kit quite easily from Amazon. I've got, I'll pop one in the link in the description down below and we're ready to go, I think. And now I'm using this tool to unhook. So this is the punch down tool and it's, there's, you've got an accessory at the back. And I think this, I can't remember its name, please comment below, but um, yeah, you, you can see me then just toggling it out and um, freeing up the cable, ready for it to be punched down again. Okay, so we're back now and we managed to crimp this cable. So you need to follow a precise pattern, which I'll put up on the screen now. So once you put the cables in the right order, based on the color pattern, you 
you slot them in and then you use one of these tools whereas you just you would slot that in and then you would crimp it down so if this is the first time you've done it I, I normally would try it with some sort of loose piece of cable that you've got lying around and practice a bit because obviously this cable is a bit short and you haven't got much um, you know you can't really make that many mistakes too many times but assuming you're comfortable with that that should be quite straightforward for you so at this stage we are ready oh sorry before I mentioned so it's really good idea to test the cable before we go ahead so I've already done that um, this is quite simple you can use a cable tester uh, any sort of cable tester you have or you can purchase one from Amazon and you would put the cable tester in here and then it would sort of test that all the kind of everything has been terminated properly I would also recommend just you know plugging in your computer running some speed tests also just to be safe and sound and then um, yeah you should be fine so let's connect this up be careful here push the cable back slightly now and now we're ready to screw these in perfect so once that's screwed on we can get our, a cover back on so I'm gonna peel, peel this off and I think so the, so this so this part goes down where the two ports are and this is gonna clip upwards perfect okay so let's have a look at our network cabinet this is pretty busy and pretty messy so I apologize um, but what we're interested in here is this device this is the uh, Unify switch PoE, the four PoE ports, which are these four ports over here. So I, I had a look at the um, configuration labeling. I should be able to free up one of these ports by moving them around, and that will enable me to uh, power the access point. So I think it's one of these cables which is the actual right one that needs to be powered. So this needs to be connected in properly, which I'm going to do right now. Now at this stage, we need to log into our cloud key. And this is the home page, home dashboard. So I need to go to devices. I need to find my Unify switch, PoE, which I'm going to click on. And I'm going to have a look at the ports available. So we are at the network cabinet right now. So I've uh, disconnected the port 7 which I'll be using for this purpose and if you click on the ports you can also uh, rename the port so you remember what's on which port for example I have a UVCG3 dome running on, on, on this port I think this one is running my cloud key and, and this one is running a UVCG3 flex so while I'm here I'll just rename this so just go here rename and then apply yes and then I'll be doing this one while I'm here and applying it. So it's provisioning, so it's, it's confirming the changes. Okay, and now it's done. So now that's sorted. So now let's go and plug in
Okay, so as you've seen, I've plugged in the cable and now we have PoE, so we have power enabled on the device. So it's starting receiving and sending traffic. As I can see from the stats, uh, it's got 3.6 uh, watts pulling in. And here we go, it just appeared. Unify AP AC in wall pending adoption. So that's sort of how you how you power a PoE device. Now let's carry on with the adoption process. So symbol here. So there's an update. It's always recommended to run the update, but I'll do that after I've done the adoption. So I'll click on this and I'm going to click adopt. So in this way, it's going to be it's going to basically come in to my uh, network, um, and it's going to be recognized by Unify. So it already has a network IP address, one six eight dot one dot two three one, which you will probably want to change to a static IP address down the line. So it's provisioning, provisioning. Okay, so it looks like it connected successfully. So let's go ahead and upgrade it. So this will go and get a latest software release um, from Unified Network and it will apply it. As you can see, there's I've got a quite a few releases pending, so I'll go in the order. So I'll do the APAC wall first, then I'll do the APAC light, and then I'm going to do the switch. So I'm going in that order. Comment below if, if I should be following a different order, and that would be much appreciated. Okay, so we've upgraded all the devices and I've upgraded the controller. So now this is a really good time to start setting up some of the devices and see how they're all set up and configured. So I, once you reboot, the, your clients will attach to the first uh, a, a access point that comes up available. So now we've got the majority of other, my devices, 11 are connected to the Unify APAC and wall. Only two are connected to the APAC light. So if I can click on click on clients, I've got my uh, iPhone and I've got my MacBook, which are connecting to the downstairs APAC light and my APAC wall, which is which is upstairs, has all the other devices connected to it. Now this isn't really efficient because some devices are actually located downstairs. For example, my Nest Hello, that's in, in, in the front door. My Nest Famistat is downstairs in the kitchen. So ideally, what I want to do is I want to force these devices to connect to that specific access point because they never move around, whereas everything else should be able to keep moving around as normal. So how do we do this? So we can click on the Unify APAC light, go to configuration. Let's go to the wireless lands. And I've got my SSID here that I'm using, the IoT251. And what I did was I created a downstairs version of it. So if you click on the pencil, I'll show you because I need to configure the 5G. So you need to do the 2G and the 5 uh, gigahertz. So 2 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. So click here, IoT underscore downstairs. And click Save. Q changes. And apply. So now I'm in my Nest app and I'm going to update the Wi-Fi settings for my Nest Hello. So I'm connecting to the camera, and once we've connected, we should be able to see the full list of wireless SSID available, so all the wireless networks that are around uh, where the doorbell is located. Here we go, so we've got our IoT251 downstairs, so I'm gonna select that. You can see sort of we've got, uh, it's, it's got the highest signal 
and we need to put the password in. So that went in and now connecting, setting up the Wi-Fi, it's testing it and we're done. In the next video, I'm going to integrate the Unify APAC in wall within Home Assistant so we can start reading some of the metrics or some of the data and do some automations based on that. Please subscribe and see you in the next one.